guys, I'd really appreciate if you got your popcorn ready, your notepad and pen ready, and an open mind ready, because I'm about to tell you all about the black experience, and it will help you understand why people are rioting, why people are sad, why people are angry, why people are crying. For years we felt like this, and it is no longer our job to tell you. It is your job to listen. Early in the morning, early in the morning, early in the morning, early in the morning. Welcome back to the channel, guys. You already know who it is. It's your boy Cam. Topical juice. And you know what? I've woken up today, it's Monday, and I'm just happy. I've gone on Twitter, I've gone on Instagram, and all I've seen is, you know, white people holding themselves accountable for their ignorance, for their previous ignorance, for their previous mindset, for previously unknowingly or refusing to accept that they were contributing to a systematic racist society. Do you know what that ma how that makes me feel? Someone who has learned and knows the truth about black history, knows the truth about what we go through on a daily basis. And then like, for people, for years and years, for people to deny that you, you're, you shouldn't feel like that. Your experience is the same, your experience ain't that bad. Or that we shouldn't feel the way we're feeling. And then to see that people are now understanding where we're coming from, I could cry. Honestly, I could cry. Mark my words right now. By the time, it's my time to go. By the time the universe says, Cam, you've done all you can do. You're leaving, you're, you're, you're onwards, you're on to the next life. I would have left this earth in a very different world to the one that I came into. Do you understand me? Mark my words. Every video that I put out is gonna to touch another person. It's gonna educate another person. And when I die, this world will be different. I promise you. Because let me tell you about the world that I grew up in. I grew up in a world where the only story I know about my parents is one where my dad had to chase away white racist pagans from my mom because they were harassing her for being with a black guy. I grew up in a world where the first time I ever got called a wog was at the age of 10 years old. I grew up in a world where I went to school and we had race fights, we had race wars. And in a white school, we were very, very outnumbered still. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm telling you? I grew up in a world where if I'm walking along the street wearing a tracksuit, nine out of 10 people are gonna cross the road. Do you know what that does to someone's mentality? <laughs> I grew up in a world where the only history we learn about our kind is slavery. One where we're second class citizens and things like that. I grew up in a world where every historical black event has been whitewashed, completely whitewashed to eradicate any black influence and to make it look like it was, it was it's purely, it's just been a white history. I grew up in a world where if you're white and racist and you walk into a church and murder nine innocent black civilians, you get arrested peacefully and asked if you're hungry. Whereas the same world, if you're selling cigarettes outside a store illegally, Eric Garner, or if you're doing fraudulent checks or whatever it is, George Floyd, you get four officers holding you down, restraining you with a knee in the back of your neck. You can die on camera and there's barely any justice. Okay, there might be justice for them. Hopefully there's justice for George. But, but how many George Floyds are there? Let's not forget that. Remember, what you're seeing now has been happening. We've been telling you this. This is where the frustration lies, but it's also a very good thing because it's amazing that you guys, have, or a lot of people have opened their mind and they're seeing what's actually happening. But the, the point is, just because you've seen it now, it doesn't mean it's just started now. It just means that we finally got enough support where we can actually hold the conversation now. That's what, that's what this means. I grew up in a world where if you're rich and white and you don't like the look of a building, in this example, Grenfell Tower, you can just ask for it to get changed. It's a bit of an eyesore, so let's change it to make, to make it look like something nicer. What we'll do is we'll put some plastic cladding on that because I'm rich and I'm, and I'm white, but over there, the poor side, I don't really like the look of that. So we'll get that changed. That's the world we live in, the same cladding that lit up the whole building and killed how many people inside. I grew up in a world where we get killed for no reason and told to get over slavery because it was 300 years ago. The same slavery that we feel the effects of today. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You understand why I started the video like this? Because you're starting to realize that our lives are very different and have been very, very different. You might be sat there thinking, Cam, we went to the same school. We were sat in the same lesson. We had the same experience. Cam, I've seen you in the shows, I've seen you in the clubs. I see, we, 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 we party in the same clubs, we dance in the same clubs, we've got the same experience. Nah, nah, 
I might have been in that lesson with you, but we did not have the same experience. You don't understand what it feels like to be a minority in the class and have to sit through history that's just been falsified. History that validates and supports white privilege. Nah, 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 nah. We might have been in the same club, but you don't realise I probably paid double to get in. Are we really seeing the, the vast differences in our upbringings and our lives? Very, very, very different. The point is, just because you're white, it doesn't mean that your life has been easy. This is key. You may have been through struggles that even I have no idea how to comprehend. And I'll hold my hands up. It's ain't a competition. I don't want no struggles. <laughs> you lot can have the struggles. I don't want the struggles. It's ain't a competition. You understand? The point is, your skin colour is not making it harder. And because you're white, for example, you cannot, comp your mind can't comprehend the struggle. It can't, it can't take it there. Your mind, your mind physically and biologically cannot comprehend something that you've never experienced. The ignorance, the microaggressions, the outward racism, the systematic and uh, the oppression that you feel from, not only do you feel from a country, you feel it from a race, you feel it from the world. Do you know what that does to someone's mentality? Do you know what that does to me and my friends, to my people? Your mind physically cannot fathom what that feels like it can't you can't take it there um, i can't understand what what women have to go through certain women have to go through i can't understand what certain asian populations have to go through i can't fathom that there's no way you could ever comprehend the, the the struggle that we actually go through as a people okay in my white friends group chats here this isn't a stereotype it's because i know them in my white friends group chats they're probably talking about pubs they're talking about girls that they might have smashed they're talking about holidays Holidays are going. They're talking about hardships at work. Our work was dead today. They're talking about this, that and the other. In none of those conversations are they talking about an unarmed white man dying. They're not talking about how they can't get jobs because their surname is too, it is called Olorunwa. They're not talking about what racist, ignorant remark their manager said to them at work, which, which played on their mind for, for two days afterwards. Because they did not experience that. Now let me lead on to a bit about black history. Yeah, and it might help explain why people are rioting because I've seen so many people on um, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, ah, oh, you know, at their own president. When the looting starts, the shooting starts. Let me actually, rather than rather than doing stupid, ignorant raps in your tweets, yeah, Mr. Trump, how about actually pausing for one second, not clicking send, and thinking, oh. Why is it black people are rioting right now? Why is it black people have been rioting for the last hundreds or hundreds of years? Why is it that they're, all they're doing is screaming and screaming for equality just to, be, just to be deemed as equal humans? Why are they rioting? I wonder why people are making such noise. Because we have no voice. <laughs> is it really that hard? Is it really that complicated to understand why people do certain things? Why do you think riots happen in the world? If it's black people, if it's homosexuals, if it's anything, if it's um, poor people in Russian revolution, whatever it is, if it's the French revolution against the bourgeois, against rich French people, why do you think revolution happens? Because you have systematic oppression and no one's voice is being heard. That is why we turn this shit upside down, to be heard. Our voices are mute. It falls on deaf ears, it falls on a deaf government, it falls on deaf people. What haven't we tried? What haven't we tried? We've tried the leadership. MLK, Carmichael, Malcolm X and the rest, they're just the biggest names. They're, they're the biggest names, let alone the small, the, the lower level leadership. We tried that. Where are they now? They're all dead. All of them. What do you think is going to happen when black people started developing a consciousness? Leadership started growing. We started realising the hardship that we dealt with. Kill them off. We tried the leaders, they killed them off. What did we do in 19, was it 1921? What are we doing back in the 1920s? We had Black Wall Street. Did you guys know that? Black Wall Street existed. Black businesses, black enterprises. What happened to that? It got burnt down to the ground, never to be built up again by who? White racists. Tried that. We tried the independent thing. Yeah? We tried to abolish slavery all back in the day. What, what did they do? They introduced Jim Crow. They introduced mass incarceration where black people go to jail for loitering, jaywalking, low level selling of drugs, and they'll be going into jail for years. Mass incarceration. Why do you think they did that? 
Prison labor. What's prison labor? Free labor. What's free labor? Slavery. That is modern day slavery. That is what is happening now. Right now. We, we've tried all this. Victoria's Secret, all them sexy clothes that you use, that, that you like to wear. That's made with um, prison labor. <laughs> all you gotta do is do your research and you'll find out the world that you really live in. Cause, you've been, cause everyone's been living with a cloud and a, uh, a, a cloth over their eyes. You don't understand what the, the, the harsh realities of, of what people have to deal with. We've done the protests. That didn't work. They beat us. They kill us. Rodney King. Remember the riots that happened in the 80s? That all stemmed from the Rodney King beating. Was it the 80s or was it the 90s? Damn, I can't remember now. I think it was the 80s. I think it was the 90s actually. Either way, the only reason those riots happened in LA and across the United States is because those white officers were beating the shit out of Rodney King and they didn't realise they were getting filmed. They got filmed and they got away with it. This has been happening, people! What you think? You think you think 2020 is new? Rodney King got beaten the shit out of and they all got and they all got away with it. That's why we rioted then. That's why we looted then. What happened then? Nothing. Imagine you dyed your hair green. And once you dyed your hair green, you couldn't get a job. Once you dyed your hair green, people start to call you thugs. You dyed your hair green, but your friends' families don't want you around them no more. Imagine then that you had your dyed hair green from birth and you couldn't change it. Then you would know. Then you would have an inkling of what it feels like. And then someone, tell, and then someone tells you, ah, oh, don't worry about it, man. All you green haired people, that, that was like, you got, you, you got abused like 300 years ago. Don't worry about that. You need to get over that now. Imagine someone telling you that. Ultimately, we are telling you this is how the world is. This isn't up for debate. This isn't like a, oh, you know, I tell you my opinion, you kind of give you your opinion. No, 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 <laughs> no. We are telling you this is what it is. So if you don't listen, that's on you. You're the problem. You're the problem. Imagine you've literally broken your arm and you can see the bone popping out and you're saying, guys, it's broken. My arm is broken. Take me to the hospital, please. I need help, please. Please, it's broken. I'm in pain. I'm crying. And someone tells you, nah, nah, just get over that. That will heal. That, that should be able to heal on its own. And the thing is, it's a lot easier to deny the truth exists because you don't want that. If something doesn't affect someone, they're just going to choose to, turn, to switch off. But you no longer can switch off by choice. Because, do you know why? Because people like me are not going to allow it. White people, Asian people, whatever, Hispanic people who are open-minded, we are not going to let you forget it. You understand? No more. You're going to understand your privilege and you're going to understand the hardship. You will. <laughs> You will. We ain't gonna let you forget it no more. For years and years and years and years, I've known this. For years and years, my friends have known this. For years and years, our people have known this. Yeah? But I, I never had the confidence to speak so freely. And you know why? The reason why I'm, I'm saying it with such conviction now is because I no longer care about offending white people. It's that simple. I've bitten my tongue for so long about racial issue, issues and being so freely and speaking it with such chest because how it makes white people feel. Do you know how wrong that is on so many levels? That so much empathy, <laughs> I'm, not even, I'm not even guessing, I've got so much empathy for how other people feel that I, I didn't even want to speak about racism because it made white people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No more, no more. If you feel uncomfortable, you're the problem. No more am I ever gonna hold back on talking about how hard, how hard this life actually is for people of color because how it makes racist white people feel. <laughs> I'm ashamed that I bit my tongue for so long. 2017, we shut down Central, we marched the streets through London, exactly like I saw happened in London the other day. We marched the streets then. And the reason why we march the streets then, and the reason why people are looting then, and this, that, and the other, is because we empathize with the states. I've been hearing a lot of people say, ah, oh, well, America's a lot worse though, isn't it? In the UK, we're not as bad. In America, it's a lot worse. No, yeah? And the reason why that's not true is because it all falls under the same umbrella. Obviously, it goes without saying that one person's experience in, a, in one country is gonna be different to another country. Well, people's lives are different in the same country, you understand? 
me and my friends have similar experiences with different lives growing up in South East London. Everyone's different, so of course they're gonna have different experiences in different countries. That's a given. The point is, the reason why we, where we march the streets in London for our people out in the States as well is not because they just look like us. It's because we empathize with their experience. We suffer from this, we suffer from the exact same systematic oppression as they do in the States. It's just the symptom is different. The symptom is different. Police out there have guns. You understand? Well, police out here don't. So you, you, you've got different statistics there already. The symptoms are different. Just because capitalism, what the whole nation was founded on, originated from slavery. Slavery was capitalism. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what it's founded on. Their history was founded on that. UK, well, you think the UK just sat there and watched American deal with slavery? No, we were involved in slavery. You know, we, use, we used to transport slaves through the Caribbean and things like that. You understand our histories are very similar, but it doesn't matter. We're all under the umbrella of systematic oppression. That's why we riot. I'm not trying to say that we should be looting and, and, and destroying the communities that we live in. Of course not. But you can't sit there and say, oh, oh yeah, when people are, oh, when they started rioting, you had my support before then, but now nah, you just, you're just destroying the country. You never, you, you ain't got my support now. Big man, you never supported us in the first place if that's your mentality. If you want to know about the black experience, I can't upload a video that long. YouTube won't let me upload a video that's infinite long, you get me? I can't put the little intricate details in the video, I'm just telling you the big things. And I'm sure a lot of you didn't even know Black Wall Street existed, and that's a big thing. It, it, you know what, actually, let me end on this note. Even down to the fact that Jesus, let me end on this. Let me tell you about the black experience. A lot of black people are religious, right? The same God that a lot of them worship, for example, the same Jesus, is not even the right Jesus. Jesus wasn't white, <laughs> for example. Jesus wasn't white. That is an example of whitewashed history. Jesus was not white. He did not have a thin nose and pale skin. That Jesus that's hung up on the cross that you see in films, in churches, is an example of whitewashed history. What do you think that's gonna do to a mentality of all the races that see that? White people are gonna think- I found this on the web. Fuck's sake. White people are gonna have a sense of entitlement because God looks like them, do we understand, yeah? Which is fake, because when the Romans came and pretty much distorted all the history books and blah, 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 I'm gonna get into that, because you do your own history, you do your own research as well, yeah? You've got a white Jesus, when you've got white people looking at that thinking, oh, Jesus looked like me, you know? That's amazing, because then I've got a sense of superiority against black people, for example, or Asians or whatever, because Jesus, Jesus didn't look like them. So what, what happens then when you've got black people who are worshipping a god that doesn't even look like them, who looks like the white man. It, history is all wrong, people. <laughs> the, the, the world that you think you've been living in is, has, con, has been completely, is, is all fake. And, you, and I'm not, I'm not, I ain't got, I've not unlocked the answers to the world. I'm just a boy from South East London. If I know this, you can know this. Do you understand? Do you understand? If I know this, you can know this. I'm just a young man from South East London. It's simple research, it's simple logic. All of us have lived in an entirely whitewashed world where black history has been eradicated, where white history is the only thing we know. Did you know a black man invented the traffic light? Probably didn't. I'm sure a black man actually helped Edison. I, 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 don't quote me on that. I'm sure a black man contributed with Thomas Edison. We don't know that, do we? You don't know that. Because history is completely warped. We were kings and queens, not slaves. Do you understand me? Racism didn't exist until white people made it exist. Race wasn't a thing, it's a social construct. Race became a thing when white people looked at black people and said, you are below us and we want to keep you as slaves. And we invented capitalism and that's where the westernized culture came from. Racism was not a thing until then. So actually, race, racism is the fault of white people. That's it. Come, as in, I'm not blaming you. I'm not blaming my friends. I'm not. I'm not blaming the white people that I know and love. I'm just. I'm telling you straight. Racism, the world that we live in, all this race, all this hatred, it comes from white people. <laughs> all this, all the, all the systematic oppression that you see, all the kneeling on necks that you see, all the people dying that you see. It comes from a structure and it comes from a system created by white people. So we have to break the chains. Do you understand? We have to break the handcuffs. Not we as black people, we as human beings. We as human beings versus racists. 
That's what we need to be doing. I just want to give you guys an, a, a taste of what it's like to be to be black. Like, it, it, it's it's not fun. <laughs> like, it will actually don't get that twisted. The body that you see me in, the skin that you see me in, I would not change that for the world. I'm beautiful, and you can't tell me anything otherwise. My skin's beautiful. I'm beautiful. Not arrogant. I'm not being cocky. I'm not being confident. I don't care about the way I look. I don't care about handsome this and the other. Fuck all that. I'm beautiful because I'm black and I'm proud. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the thumbs up and I'll see you soon, people then.